Now for the last few hours, two systems out there that we're looking at. First of all, it's been traveling over some very warm waters and that has helped it to try to intensify. At the same time, we have some upper level shearing, which has been trying to weaken it. But unfortunately, it looks like the hot water is winning right now. Take a look at this category three. The feeder bands are starting to come across and pummeling parts of the Keys with some strong winds and torrential rainfall. If we look right now at the very latest numbers as of 11 p.m., the wind Winds are up to 115 miles per hour. That's up from 110 earlier this afternoon. That makes it a Cat 3, 24.4 north, 83.7 west. It is moving now a little faster northeast around 18 and now less than 125 miles west of Key West, Florida. If we take a look at a good radar imagery coming out of the Keys, we can clearly see the eastern section of the eye wall. It is trying to move towards the Naples, Fort Myers area. Right now, it looks like it'll probably make landfall direct impact just due south of Naples. This is where we'll probably have the biggest storm surge up to 20 feet possible, but all that ponding of water will also start getting into uh, Florida Bay later on tonight, still looking at five to eight feet. As we take a good close up view now of the Keys, it is a little quiet right now. We did get one squall line moving through that sparked a couple of tornadoes about an hour ago close to Key West. It is still dry over the middle and upper Keys, but that will change shortly. Again, the lower Keys from Sugarloaf down to Key West saw that feeder band go by. Wind speeds were clocked at about 50 miles per hour. If we take a look at current wind speeds, they're still in the teens from Deerfield Beach down to Fort Lauderdale, kicking up to 22 in Miami. But Key West right now at 45, that is sustained. That's tropical storm force winds, and those are the kinds of winds that we will see later on tonight here in Miami-Dade and Broward. But if we take a look at the gusts, all the way up to 60 now in Key West. Marathon at 39. Naples is not reporting at this hour. If we take a look at the forecast cone, it is not encouraging. We are expecting landfall sometime around 6 a.m. And then by 8 a.m., it should be further inland, but still as a Category 3 storm. So it will make landfall as a Category 3 right over southwest Florida. And everyone in the Sunshine State from Lake Okeechobee all the way down to the Keys will feel hurricane force winds as the system makes its way into the Atlantic. It will be moving pretty fast. If there's a, at least one bright side, it is that it will make its way across the southern peninsula pretty quick. But everyone should feel hurricane force winds. There is a possibility and the threat of tornadic activity all over South Florida as the system enters into the uh, warm waters of the Atlantic. It should be out there far away by 8 p.m. later on tomorrow. Now this is the huge wind field that we're talking about. Already we're getting to feel those uh, tropical storm force winds all the way down into the Keys. And here's that huge area of hurricane force winds. This is over 74 miles per hour and it's going to start moving towards South Florida during the next few hours. You can clearly see that huge swath. That eye, by the way, is almost 80 to 100 miles wide. So everyone's throughout South Florida will feel the impact. I'm sure there will be power outages as well as trees toppled down and the possibility of some destruction too of some houses and even some trailer homes. We are under a tornado watch for all of South Florida. There is the eye once again. We've already seen some tornadic activity, some water spouts down by the Keys, and this will continue later on tonight. There is the possibility as well of some uh, flooding throughout South Florida. Four to eight inches of rainfall is a big possibility. Uh, higher numbers can go as much as 12. I've seen some models showing 12 inches of rain before the system is all said and done. Once again, Category 3, poised to make landfall somewhere over southwest Florida very early in the morning. I'll have more on this later on. Let's send it back to the desk. All right, Phil, thank you. Well, as the storm heads towards southwest Florida, those in the Keys will feel Wilma's wrath first. We've got you covered up and down the island chain. J.P. Hervis is live in Key Lar Largo. Derek Hayward is in Marathon, but we're going to start tonight with Joel Brown, who is live for us in Key West. How are you holding up there, Joel? Starting to, starting to pick up a little bit here in Key West. Here We're about an hour and a half into a mandatory curfew for the city. So Duval Street finally cleared out as far as Key West standards go. Folks are inside as Wilma has begun to wash ashore. The big story today, or tonight I should say, has not been the rain, it's the wind. The wind gusts have been picking up. We've recorded some in the 30s and the 50 mile an hour zone. So the wind is starting to whip through here and it's expected to get progressively worse as the evening goes on and into Sunday morning or Monday morning, I should say, as Wilma is finally beginning to show herself on this island.
every wave that crashes, Hurricane Wilma works herself closer to Key West. Storm surge rising, wind gusts knocking the curious off their feet. All right, we can see the wind starting to pick up. The rain is expected to come. This is going to get progressively worse. You want people off the street. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to make sure the police officers come down and bullhorn them and tell everybody that they need to get off the street. By 10 o'clock tonight, there's a mandatory curfew. So bar stools go up, the alcohol cut off, the Wilma waiting party is over. She's here. Now warnings to take cover. Flooding has always been the big fear, and before the, even the rain starts, it's already begun a couple inches on Duval, and this is not rainwater. This is all because of the storm surge coming in off the Atlantic. It's bringing in seaweed and starting to really flood in here, and then you have more water at the other end of Duval coming in on the Gulf side. So all that water expected to converge the flooding will be significant. Public works crews are making their way along the island trying to get these road closed signs out here to keep people off these streets. It's just too dangerous to be driving or walking around in this. But city crews can't seem to close the streets fast enough. Rising waters and rising frustration with the island's many weather watchers. They don't need to be out. They need to go home. Y'all need to go home. Police are telling folks they want them indoors by 10 o'clock, a curfew till 7 a.m. You going to do that? Absolutely. If the man says so, better happen. It better happen, but as we come back out live on Duval here, you can see the streets are not completely clear. I told you they were empty by Key West standards, but you have plenty of folks still out here wanting to see what Wilma's going to bring ashore. This guy on his bike, and it's going to get dangerous out here as these winds whip around these downtown buildings. It's like a wind tunnel down here, and it's going to get progressively worse, as we said. So Key West police is making their way down the streets, across Wall Street, and, and, and into the city, clearing the streets. They have a bullhorn. They're telling folks you need to get inside. There was a 10 o'clock curfew, and it's going to run till 7 a.m. It's not safe to be out here, and that's what they are warning folks. Now, if you don't feel safe, if you're in the city and you're in Key West and you don't feel safe in the midst of these strong, these strengthening winds here as they blow through, there are shelters, three shelters in this city of last resort. The first one is here at La Concha. This is the hotel, Duval and Fleming. This is a refuge of last resort. The other two, Key West High School and also Sugarloaf School, the other two shelters of last resort. You can still get over there to those places and find some, some safe refuge if you don't feel safe in your home. Because right now the winds are getting, are getting bad and the wind gusts are continuing to pick up. So uh, we're going to keep following this and we'll check back with you later in the show. Belkis, Craig. All right, Joel Brown, thank you for that live update in Key West. Well, the city of Marathon also worried about storm surge tonight. Night team coverage continues with Derek Hayward. He has more on that. Derek. Well, Craig, you're right. That is the greatest fear here on Marathon Key tonight, storm surge, where so many people are hunkered down because so many people have refused to evacuate this island. And many of those who are seeking refuge tonight are doing it in a 55-year-old building, a place that has traditionally been the place of last resort for everybody on Marathon Key, man or beast. It's called, believe it or not, the Overseas Sports Bar and Grill. The uh, bar will stay open all night tonight. We cater to the boaters and the um, mobile home people that don't have a place to go. And we do let animals in if they have their leash. So are you telling people to bring the blankets or, or what? Blankets, a pillow, dog food. Are you and Buttercup staying here tonight? Yes, we are. Why is that? Uh, because our home's here and our marina's here. And this place is uh, the safest place, you think? Uh, yes. Very safe. This was made during the railroad days. It's 16-inch walls made with railroad ties. It's been through a lot of hurricanes, and it's still here. Have you, have you done this before? Yes, uh, so through, through Katrina and Rita. Oh, really? Yes. Buttercup, you got anything you'd like to say? OK, <laughs> got the point. Elsewhere on Marathon Key, police are saturating the area with something other than the anticipated rainfall. Their presence. State police and deputies are everywhere on the mostly deserted streets. Earlier in the day, those who chose not to evacuate scurried to put shutters in place and get ready for Wilma. 
Everybody who's lived here forever, they're like, nah, it's going to be okay. It appears more are staying than evacuating, and many of them wrapped up shopping for supplies at the last minute. You're going to get stuck on the road, or you're going to go somewhere where it's going to hit anyway, so might as well just stay here, and hopefully it won't be bad. Let's hope. Well, we anticipate getting walloped about 3 o'clock in the morning, and one way or the other, we'll make sure you know what goes on here. Live on Marathon Key, Derek Haywood, 7 News 19. All right, Derek, thank you. Well, those in the upper keys who decided not to evacuate may now be having second thoughts. J.P. Hervis in Key Largo with more on that for us. J.P.? That's right. Key Largo, for the most part, quiet this evening, but the wind is starting to pick up slightly and the weather will eventually deteriorate. One family worrying so much about Wilma, worrying about this storm that continues to strengthen, they decided to take advantage of one of the shelters of last resort. Uh, just looking for a place to stay. A last second search for shelter. The Batista family stops at the Key Largo Marriott, scared of the storm surge that may hit their home. Yeah, the water goes really like a block uh, down to the water. so. I'm scared that the hurricane will catch us. I'm, I have no idea, and I'm tired of thinking about it. Hours earlier, Helen Lutz stood in her yard worried about the very same thing. Storm surge on the bay or gulf side of the Upper Keys could reach eight feet. Her property lies level to Florida Bay. By Monday morning, she may have to dog paddle in her own backyard. All I think about is everybody saying about where the water level will be, and i frightened it'll take my cars away. Oh, the 20 plus vessels usually docked at the Upper Key Sailing Club are gone. Even the picnic tables are tied. If you see the bay, we're wide open here. There's nothing to protect us, you know? I mean, everybody's really concerned. We've got all the, the club's fleet dogs. captain says with the boat secure, his biggest concern, a clubhouse full of keepsakes. The building only a few feet above sea level. We're going to take water in the clubhouse, absolutely. We're a shelter of last resort, so we'll be glad to take in. If the surge enters the Batista home, they won't be there. Marriott staff opening their closed doors to a relieved family. And fortunately, there is no storm surge to speak of at this hour because it's still calm in Key Largo. But as Wilma gets closer, that should change. We're live tonight in Key Largo. J.P. Hervis, 7 News, 19. All right, J.P. Well, conditions are little by little beginning to, de to deteriorate on the mainland here at home. Charles Belay is on Fort Lauderdale Beach. And what's up with the party behind you there, Charles? Well, I'll tell you, Belkis and Craig, it's a good question because these people who are here at the Elbow Room have got a big surprise coming to them at 1 o'clock. There is an agreement between the management of the Elbow Room and Fort Lauderdale Police. This place is shutting down at 1 o'clock, so the party is going to end. A lot of them are too drunk to know that right now. But what we're going to show you now is information that is coming from Fort Lauderdale Police. We are now starting to feel the effects. This is a vacuum because of all of the low pressure associated with Wilma. It's been, all the air is being sucked across the state to fuel her. And there are some big do's and don'ts tonight from Fort Lauderdale Police. Listen up. And so it begins. Hurricane Wilma fast approaching the west coast, but the east coast caught in the vacuum. Wilma's low pressure sucking air from every direction, the wind whipping Fort Lauderdale Beach, and police are asking people to play it smart. To please leave the roadways by around midnight. That's when the projected winds will be to a point where it's going to become unsafe. In addition to traffic, police are facing several other public safety issues, including those who choose to party. The Elbow Room and other businesses, always packed on Sunday night, agreeing to close early. They will work with us and they will shut down their operations at a point where it becomes too dangerous. Businesses all along A1A are boarded up. Just a few remain open to serve the diehard. But cops remind everyone that when conditions become too dangerous to serve the public, they too will take cover. Once we determine that the wind conditions have reached a point where they are dangerous for our first responders, we will ask our officers and our firefighters to seek shelter. Okay, as we come back out live, you are taking a look at the first effects of Wilma as it hits Fort Lauderdale Beach. The winds are definitely starting to whip right now, and that is just uh, taking place within the past hour or so. We can also tell you that we're seeing the same thing that we saw during Katrina and during Rita. 
there is an awful lot of sand being sucked in this direction as that vacuum continues to get stronger. During uh, Katrina and Rita, we saw a lot of sand covering A1A, so much, in fact, that bulldozers had to be brought in to clear it all out. You heard police talking about uh, being off of the streets at midnight, and they're going to be pretty serious about this because they say at some point, emergency vehicles are going to have to get through along with FPNL crews after the storm passes and they don't want to have to be fighting sightseers and traffic. So they want everybody to stay in even after the eye passes over the state. They want people to stay off the streets if they don't have any business being out there. They just, they don't want to have to deal with that. More information coming from Fort Lauderdale Police tonight. They do not want anybody calling 911 unless it is a dire emergency. They said for any sort of information or any questions you might have relating to the storm, Broward County's 311 number is up and running. It has been up and running for uh, quite some time now to answer any questions that people might have. Also, one more bit of information that Fort Lauderdale Police wanted us to pass along. Sometimes, after a hurricane passes over, people lose power. We know that. Sometimes, the people who live across the street from you do have power and you don't. There is the tendency to bring a uh, an extension cord, an extension cable, to stretch it across the street, plug into your neighbor's power, and be able to run your generator, possibly your uh, lights and your uh, refrigerator. Police don't want you to do that in this case because those cords are not uh, very sturdy and they are not uh, made to have traffic and tires go over the top of them. So what they want you to do is just wait. I know it's kind of difficult. No one likes to be in the in the heat during the day, being without AC, being without uh, your uh, creature comforts. But they want everybody to take uh, all of these warnings, uh, heed them, because they believe that it's going to save a lot of lives. They don't want to have to be cleaning up a big mess after Rita, I mean, excuse me, after Wilma. We're live tonight on Fort Lauderdale Beach. I'm Charles Belay, 7 News. Thorough as always. Charles, thank you. Well, you know, earlier this week, rainfall associated with Hurricane Wilma caused some flooding in Broward County. Now they're preparing for another round, and Tiffany Tucker's in Oakland Park with more on that. Tiffany? Greg, we're on Northeast 13th Avenue, and we were here on Saturday. It looks a little bit different here. The streets aren't covered with water. In fact, a few hours ago, crews unplugged this huge pump, but they tell me they are on standby for 24 hours because when this rain comes down, they will reconnect it and hopefully get that water back out. I want to show you what this neighbor here did. He actually put his trucks on cement blocks because he fears when this water comes in, things will get nasty. The calm before the storm. The streets in this Oakland Park neighborhood dried out one day after they took a soaking. Uh, obviously, it's a lot drier now. Uh, still the ground is saturated, so we're probably expecting some more flooding. This machine pumping out the water still on overdrive because Wilma's on the way. This the scene Saturday. The streets completely flooded in several neighborhoods. People trying to walk in it, cars maneuvering through it, and some homes taking a beating. There was at least 12 inches of water throughout the house. Residents stock up on sandbags with the hopes that water won't seep into their homes. But will the precautions be enough if Wilma gets her way? The answer is no. All right, back out live on Northeast 13th Avenue. Crews tell me that they are on standby 24 hours. They are waiting like we all have been waiting for Wilma to arrive. And when she does, they will reconnect those connectors right there. They will put those hoses back and they will hopefully get that water out if it should happen, if it should come our way, those residents say. They're prepared. Reporting live from Oakland Park, Tiffany Tucker for this late edition of 7 News. All right, Tiffany, thanks. Well, let's talk about the west coast of Florida now, shall we? The people there are quickly beginning to realize what they are in for. Nicole Insalata joins us from Fort Myers now. Nicole? Well, Craig and Belkis, for the last few hours now, we've been hearing about more and more shelters, at least two in the Fort Myers Lee County area, that are full as more and more people have made that last minute decision to leave. <laughs> Driving through this Fort Myers mobile home park, what's most noticeable? The quiet. Many homes shuttered and dark. We've got the cooler ready to go. Pat Williams and her husband Al won't be here when Wilma comes. What are you going to do? Uh, you don't fool with Mother Nature. All medical supplies, toiletries, clothing. 
They've packed up and are seeking shelter at a nearby hotel. Seeking shelter means something different to George Jones now that he's got six-week-old George Jr. I couldn't imagine something happening to someone else. They have childs and I couldn't imagine something happening to him. It, it just broke my heart. Nearly a thousand others, children, their parents, retirees, all looking for that sense of security, gathered at Lee County's Jermaine Arena. We're okay so far. A little hard to get used to, especially with her. She had a hard time falling asleep last night. Reading books, sleeping, watching TV. My answer is yes. Anything to while away the hours waiting for Wilma. We brought a TV, we brought cards, we have other games over there. We brought our hurricane, we actually brought our hurricane kit. Many people brought food, but the kitchen is stocked. We've been preparing this for the last two weeks. The minute something happens out here, we've been, we've been thoroughly prepared. One thing that's making life here a little bit more difficult, the temperature. Hockey is played here at Germain Arena, and you can see there's ice under this floor. So that means bundling up. Just a few miles away, shoppers at this Walmart are stocking up last minute. Because when the electric goes out where I'm at, you're done. So it's like, here we go again. And back at Germain Arena, some find time to think about priorities. This little kid changed my life completely. This is my, this is my partner. You know what I mean? I'd die for this kid. And Pat Williams doesn't want to take any chances either. I'm ready to go. I don't want to hang around. <laughs> And we have been told in the last couple hours the numbers at Germain Arena have zoomed from about 900 to almost 3,000, but they still say that they have plenty of room for folks who might make that last-minute decision to leave. Now, a little further south in Collier County in Naples, officials are telling people if you're still not sure what to do, stay home. Reporting live in Fort Myers, Nicole Insalata for the late edition of 7 News. I want to head back on over now to uh, Miami-Dade County. Steve Shapiro, he's there. He's on Hallover Beach. Steve? And Stevens, we got one left. <laughs> we got one boat left. It's got your name on it. You want it? I wish. Please. All right. It's the last boat left here. We're actually on the bay side. They kicked us off the beach. Hallover Beach is closed. All the gates are locked, padlocked. There's police over there. They don't want us on the beach side. Came over to the bay side. If you ever drive down A1A, and I'm sure a lot of you do, usually these boat slips are mobbed. There's usually a boat. In every slip, they move them into the water. Now there's an island out there. They call it Beer Can Island for obvious reasons. There are mangroves out there, so they move the boats out there and they dock the boats in the middle of the water so they don't come, uh, you know, battering into the uh, into the wall here and come up over the wall. Anyway, we decided we'd take a ride tonight. We went down to South Beach and from South Beach all the way to Sunny Isles. Apparently, people are heeding the water, uh, heeding the warning: stay away from the water. Normal busy on Ocean Drive tonight, but across the street on South Beach, somebody blown clean out of their sneakers. No, but if nobody claims them by morning, maybe these curious tourists will take them. What are you guys doing out here? Swimming. What does it look like I've been doing? <laughs> having, no, a little, <laughs> having a little, a little bit of fun. How's the waves in there? Oh, it's nice. not, not that bad. 50 blocks north, the surf almost all the way up to the boardwalk. Robert Benitez and his girlfriend came from Hialeah to check out the ocean. I just came out to see how bad the storm surge is, and it is bad. Yeah. How long are you going to spend out here? I'm leaving, man. <laughs> You're not going to wait for the rain? Nope. What for? i got to go home. <laughs> Behind the Sheridan at Bell Harbor, desolate, dead, nada, nothing. Usually you need a key. Tonight, open passage, and guests, if any left, are nowhere in sight. It goes without saying, tonight, any and all beach activity is totally at your own risk. And over here on the bay side, there was a woman, a man and his wife and a small girl, maybe four years old. They took a walk here about an hour ago. Other than that, we've seen nobody. Again, only one boat here. And I'm thinking that the wind is supposed to come from the southwest, which would be in this direction. That boat could end up over here by the time that this uh, hurricane passes. But that will be a problem for my replacement. I'm Steve Shapiro, live in Hallover. We got one left.
7 News 19. Nice. Always thinking of your co-workers, Steve. All right, let's check out uh, the situation out back, shall we? Tom Haynes, how's it looking out there on Biscayne Bay? Hi, guys. Well, you know, the 7 Newsplex is a great barometer for these hurricanes to see just how conditions are because we're right on the water, and usually the storms come in off the water. That won't be the case with Wilma. She'll be coming in from the other coast. Not a lot of wind uh, right now, but what's been so ironic about this storm is that we've had to wait a week for her to get here, and now she's charging at us so fast. Take a look behind me. You can see uh, some of the treetops already swaying. And the headline tomorrow morning will be the power outages. It will be debris on the street. It will be probably lots of power lines on the street as well. And that is why officials are urging caution. They've gone ahead and closed uh, Miami-Dade, Monroe, and Broward County schools uh, for tomorrow. A lot of people uh, don't have to go to work tomorrow unless, of course, you're in the news business. But they really want folks to be careful as you're uh, heading out the door tomorrow morning because, as Phil Farrow has been telling us all day, uh, this storm is barreling at us now at some 18, 20 miles an hour, and it is expected to hit sometime overnight, in the overnight hours between 5 and 9 a.m. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, there's going to be a lot of debris on the road, a lot of power lines down, and your power, if you live in Dade, Broward, or Monroe County, probably out. The good news in all this is that the weather will be somewhat tame next week. We're expecting temps in the 60s at night and uh, low 70s during the day. Great weather to have the windows open. Guys, back to you. All right, Tom, thanks a lot for that. And uh, let's bring you up to speed on the very latest on Hurricane Wilmot now, a powerful Category 3 storm. A hurricane warning remains in effect from Key West to Titusville on the West Coast. The warning is in effect from Key West to near Tampa. Flood watch issued for all of South Florida this evening and a tornado watch. That has now been extended until 11 a.m. Monday morning. Mandatory evacuation order issued for everyone in the Keys and for mobile home residents in Miami-Dade and Broward counties in terms of school. No school. School board officials in both Miami-Dade, Broward counties making the decision to go ahead and cancel class for Tuesday as well. So again, no school. Miami-Dade County, Broward County, or Monroe counties on Monday and Tuesday. Universities also close on Monday as well as most city and government offices and services. And the government response is ready to roll in after the storm rolls out. 2,500 National Guard troops are on standby, 13 million ready to eat meals, and 425 tractor trailers of ice and water standing by, ready to roll, all of it at the Homestead Air Reserve Base. The storm station helping you track the storm away from home. Get the cone on the phone by logging on to WSVN.com. You register there. Service is free. And for updates on the storm 24 hours a day, you can call the Tropic Watch hotline. In Miami-Dade, call 305-477-7751. In Broward, 954-776-7751. Well, Chief Meteorologist Phil, Phil, Phil Farrow has gone home to uh, rest up, to be back on the air in a little while, but uh, we are in good hands, aren't we? Jonathan Novak is here, and he's joined by Max Mayfield from the NHC. John? That's right. We have Max here over my shoulder. And Max, uh, we've been seeing this storm slowly strengthening, steadily strengthening as it's making its way toward us here in southwest Florida, seeing the impacts already in the lower keys. What can the lower keys and the middle keys and all the keys really in southwest Florida expect? And also later on as the storm gets closer, what can we in Miami-Dade and Broward counties expect as well? Well, conditions will continue to go down. You know, the center is about 100 miles west of Key West right now. And, um, you know, they're getting sustained storm force winds and these bands that are already moving through the the, uh, the lower keys and coming up into the middle keys. Uh, the eye wall itself is still very well defined uh, out here to the west here. That eye wall may just uh, skirt the lower keys, which would be very good news for them. But uh, uh, the winds will continue to pick up. The center will very likely be on the coast uh, very early on Monday morning in Collier County and then uh, continuing on to the northeast here, uh, likely just south of Lake Okeechobee and exiting in Palm Beach County. Uh, the winds uh, will be strongest on the south side and that uh, certainly includes Miami-Dade, Broward and Palm Beach County. Uh, in regards to tornadic activity, we've been talking about some already some uh, tornadic storms that have moved through. What can we expect in regards to that as the storm gets closer as well? Well, we talked to the tornado experts out in uh, Norman, Oklahoma, at the Storm Prediction Center, and uh, we also, our hurricane forecaster this evening was Stacy Stewart, who used to teach out of the radar school in Norman. Uh, everybody was on the same page here. The conditions really look favorable for uh, tornado development uh, in these rain bands, and uh, usually we say isolated tornadoes, uh, this time we bumped that up and we're saying scattered tornadoes. Okay, uh, Max, now 
we've seen a steady strengthening. Some people may be wondering, is it going to get a stronger before it actually makes landfall? Is there a chance for that, or is it just moving too quickly for that to happen? Well, there's always some chance it could strengthen a little bit, but uh, usually when you have a large uh, diameter eye like we have here, you don't see any rapid changes in intensity. So, you know, I think we're looking at a, a low-end Category 3 hurricane. Uh, the one uh, bit of good news is it's not going to be like uh, Francis or any of the slow-moving hurricanes with that relentless pounding or like Wilma did over the Yucatan. This is going to be a very, very quick event. Uh, uh, it's going to be passing through so quickly uh, and down here in Miami-Dade, Broward County, uh, those storm force winds will likely be exiting uh, you know, tomorrow afternoon. All right, Max Mayfield, thanks a lot for your time. Direct the National Hurricane Center. We'll toss it back to you guys at the desk. All right, thank you both. Well, now we have an opportunity to take you live to the area where Wilma is expected to make landfall around daybreak. That is the thought at this point in time. Sophia Choi is along, uh, well, you're in Naples right now, and we see the rain is already coming down where you are. Yeah, the rain is coming down pretty hard now, and it's getting pretty windy, too. If you can take a look behind me, you can see the palm trees really swaying. And I've got a big light here. I'm going to shine it over into the water. I'm about 20 feet away. And along those rocks, I think you can see the waves crashing. That just started happening within the last hour or so. Uh, officials here are fearing that when this storm actually does make landfall, we could see a storm surge of up to nine and a half feet or more. Belkis and Craig? Sophia, we know you've uh, been out there a couple of days in terms of evacuations. People cleared out of there pretty much? You know what? Here in Collier County, yes, uh, officials say 80% of the people actually did leave. But in the Keys, we're hearing 80% of the people decided to stay. In fact, people in mobile homes there decided to stay. So officials there are really worried tonight. Uh, but they say, you know what? You can't make people do something that they don't want to do. Well, hopefully some of those folks won't regret the decision not to evacuate when all is said and done. Sophia Choi, thank you for that live update. Uh, joining us once again from Naples. Well, the storm station is pulling an all-nighter tonight. We're here with you, and we are just getting started. We are watching Wilma now, a Category 3 storm. It is working its way towards Florida, but South Florida is already feeling some of the effects of the hurricane. We're going to update its track. That's coming up next. Images of the damage already caused. Wilma leaving behind devastation in parts of Mexico. We'll have the latest from there. And the storm clipping Cuba. Three feet of rain or more expected to fall in some parts of the island by the time Wilma passes. More on the path of Hurricane Wilma when we're back in two minutes. Continuing coverage of the path of Hurricane Wilma is taking place here on 7 News. It's a Cat 3 storm now. In case you're just tuning in, it's moving pretty quickly at this point. It's about 125 miles west of Key West, and it should make landfall on the west coast of Florida at daybreak around 6 a.m. we're hearing. Let's get a fix on the latest data coming into the Weather Center. Jonathan Novak joins us once again. John? Yeah, Craig Belkis, you mentioned that the storm is moving at a good pace, and that is Good news for a couple of reasons. Again, we're going to be seeing the rainfall estimates, the rainfall totals below uh, maybe what we saw with Katrina, say. And that's good because the storm's going to get in and out, and also it'll bring those damaging winds, of course, out of here sooner than later. You can see the eye of the storm becoming a little bit more visible here. Again, it has been strengthening. It's been holding together its organization pretty much throughout its whole course here through its start in the Caribbean. It's been a very well-organized storm, and the wind shear that we were hoping here would maybe shear it apart a little bit it hasn't helped all that much. It's just too well put together for that to really do the work that we hoped it would do. But you can see here, you can see the ocean right through the eye of the storm. It is very well organized. You can see the reds there. Those are indicating the strong thunderstorms developing around the eye, and you can see the radar here indicating those as well. A lot of those wrapping right around to the lower and mid keys. These storms bringing gusts of tropical storm force over 60 miles an hour at this point. Winds of 115 near the eye, uh, 115 miles an hour. That is a category three, of course. Northeast is its motion at 18. Here's the good news. The last few updates, it's been moving faster and faster. It should be over 20 miles an hour for its motion before it makes landfall, and that'll be good. We'll try to get it in here and out of here as soon as we can. Storm trackers, another closer look. You can see all these showers and storms, all the reds and oranges. Very heavy rainfall. We should see 4 to 8 inches, up to 12 in some localized areas all throughout South Florida. And again, these are bringing some very strong winds. And also, as Max Mayfield mentioned a little bit earlier, 
Scattered tornadic activity. We're going to be seeing some tornadoes. We've already seen a few tornado warnings around the South Florida area here today. And we're seeing some of these move from south to north right around Big Pine Key. As we take a closer look, we can see those right now. Very heavy rain around Sugarloaf and Middle Torch, Little Torch, Big Pine Key. Key West saw a tornado warning earlier on this evening, a few hours ago. And that storm moved in very quickly and moved out very quickly. But again, we can expect more of that as we head in through the next uh, I'd say about 12 to 16 hours here. We head into the rest of the afternoon tomorrow. Storm tracker showing the winds again. These are sustained, so very high. 28 marathon, but 44 in Key West. Out of the southeast, we have anything from 15 to 25 mile an hour wind readings here on the east coast. But these are the gusts up to 60 in Key West, nearing a 40 mile an hour gust in Marathon. And those outer rain bands haven't even really started affecting you yet. 36 mile an hour wind gust in Miami, and the eye of the storm is still well away from us, so we can expect pretty bad conditions here. The storm is expected to maintain its Category 3 uh, status, even a little bit inland. Maybe we can down to a 2 before it exits the East Coast here. Should pass just south of Lake Okeechobee is what we're thinking right now and make landfall right around the Naples area. But we should all expect the hurricane conditions. This shows it right here, the wind field. Look at the red here. That's going to be covering all of South Florida. The red, 74 plus mile an hour winds. So don't be fooled if the storm does go north of your area. The wind field is so large and expansive, we can all expect hurricane force winds. And again, there is that tornado watch out for all of South Florida because the tornadic activity is quite a concern. Also a flood watch through Monday, four to eight inches if possible, but up to 12 as I mentioned before. We'll have more on Hurricane Wilma coming up a little bit later on the newscast right now. Back to you guys. All right, Jonathan, thanks much for that update. Well, Hurricane Wilma already devastated the Yucatan Peninsula and dropped some heavy rain on Cuba. The latest pictures coming in now from both countries and Lynn Martinez has that for us. She's in the newsplex, Lynn. Craig and Belkis, buildings in Mexico and Cuba certainly not built to sustain this kind of abuse from any storm, and there is plenty of damage in both countries. We begin with the Yucatan Peninsula, which got a beating for 12 straight hours. The paradise land of tortillas, tequila, and cheap getaways, now drowning in floodwaters and misery. Locals whose jobs were swept away, walking in thigh-high water, carrying bags of rice. Nearly every building is heavily damaged or destroyed in Cancun. Clean drinking water, now the most needed basic necessity. A line, a mile long, of people waiting for bottled water from the Mexican government. Pictures from a video phone show what is left of a once opulent hotel, now trashed. This is the lobby. Broken windows, floodwaters, furniture thrown around, expensive chandeliers, victims of the hurricane force winds. After Mexico, Wilma made a hit in Cuba. En cocodrilo, que como decíamos. Waves tower 15 feet as they crush the western coast of Cuba. The province of Pinar del Rio got it the worst. This happened so fast. We just quickly gathered the kids and moved further inland as soon as they started telling us that the storm was coming. Cuba is the largest and most populated island in the Caribbean. More than a half million people were evacuated from low-lying areas. I can't wait till I go back home, but I'll stay here as long as I need to. This family lives right on Cuba's western edge. Instead of evacuating, they were watching a soap opera when it hit. It looked like a red ball of air and sounded like a train coming right at us, he says. What he was describing turns out to be a tornado, his home destroyed. A tobacco farmer says in his 66 years he has never seen anything like it. Fidel Castro makes an appearance on Cuban TV, telling people there is damage on the island. And the news is not good for Cuba. We're tonight a small fishing village south of Havana is totally underwater. The death toll in the Yucatan Peninsula tonight stands at seven. In the newsplex, Lynn Martinez, 7 News. All right, Lynn. And in terms of uh, Miami, Miami International Airport, we're getting word now that uh, the last flight that will be leaving the airport, that's expected to take off shortly, sometime before 1 a.m. As far as uh, county transportation in Miami-Dade County, as of midnight, buses, metro rail, metro mover, everything shut down. Uh, until probably late tomorrow afternoon. All this because of Hurricane Wilma getting better organized at pretty much the worst imaginable time just before the system slams into the state's southwest coast. Live pictures now from Key Largo. Look at that. Forecasters predicting a powerful storm surge there and flooding in that area as Wilma makes her way onshore.
And we have live pictures from, now this is interesting. This is uh, A1A on Las Olas. That's the elbow room. Charles Belay told us the cops were telling everybody at midnight the party's over. Clearly, it is not there. So uh, the cops may have to drop by the elbow room and inform them that it's time to shut down. But uh, we'll keep an eye on Fort Lauderdale and let you know what happens. Can you say trouble? All right, these are live pictures out of Key West where there's a curfew there and it's been on since 10 p.m. and looks like there people are uh, heeding the curfew warning, staying inside and uh, waiting for Wilma as we all are. We'll have more right after this quick break. Continuing coverage, the path of Hurricane Wilma, as you see it there, the storm has strengthened slightly, now a weak category three hurricane. Well, wherever you are tonight, get ready to get soaked. Let's check back with our crews in the field. We're going to start with Joel Brown. He is live from Key West. How are things looking there now, Joel? Belkis, this wind continues to pick up. We're watching here. We got our new Channel 7 wind gauges here. This one is picking up. These gusts continue to just blow through downtown. You can see they're in the 20s right now, but we just recorded 130 and then 140 mile an hour wind. And we've seen one as high as 50, and we know they've been higher than that on the island, somewhere in the 60 mile an hour wind zone. So things are going to get progressively worse as far as the wind goes. And city officials have been told by forecasters that's really going to be the danger here is the wind rather than the rain because the effects of the storm on Key West are going to be from that so-called dirty side of the storm as it comes in on the Gulf side of the island. So we're expecting storm surges and tidal surges from the Gulf side and then the water to wash through the city and then come through on the Atlantic side, which is what you're looking at now, all the way down where you showed you that uh, at about 11.30, some of the flooding, which is already starting to wash through Duval Street and comes, so a lot of that flooding is gonna match itself here and converge in the streets, and that could be part of the problem here. And it's not gonna be because of rain, it's gonna be because of storm surge and the strong winds that are blowing through this city. Now, we are under a mandatory curfew right now in Key West. It went into effect about 10 p.m. and police wanted to go through till 7 a.m. And this is exactly why, because of the weather that's blowing through here, they wanna keep folks off of the streets. Now, some folks are defying that order, and, and we are seeing folks riding through on bikes and wanting to see what Wilma's going to do. Louise, pan back around. You can see Key West PD at the end of the street here. They had to come break up a little scuffle that happened a, a few uh, minutes ago between a couple guys who were out here. Obviously, they had been out here drinking, and there was a, a little some, some minor fisticuffs outside the hotel. So Key West Police is out, and they broke that up and got those guys out of here. But there is a mandatory curfew, and they want to remind folks. So they're moving through the streets here and giving the bullhorn to folks and telling them, hey, get inside. So the curfew goes till 7 a.m. We should tell you again about the uh, shelters or refuges of last resort in this city because as this wind blows through, you may be in your house saying, I don't know if it's going to stand up to this. The first refuge of last resort is here at La Concha. This is the hotel here at the hotel, Duval and Fleming. The second one is Key West High School, and the third one is Sugar Loaf School, which is about mile marker 19. You can go to those if you just don't feel your, your home is going to make it through this storm, or if you just feel a, a little more at ease being somewhere else, because this is going to rapidly deteriorate throughout the night. We're expecting maybe after midnight and, and, and then again uh, get worse as we as we approach that 2 a.m. hour. That was, the, that was the hour that was given to us by forecasters here on when this storm would really uh, start to pick up. And we're starting to feel that today. Not so much rain, but a lot of wind on Key West. Craig, Belkis. Okay, Joel Brown, hang in there. We'll check back with you. Thank you much. Well, you know, Broward County also uh, bracing for Wilma, and they could see some damage there, too. They could. Charles Belay is along Fort Lauderdale Beach. And Charles, I may have misspoken earlier. Uh, we see the elbow room is still kicking. That uh, goes on until 1 o'clock? or. Yes, Craig, it correct, 1 o'clock, uh, but it looks like the party might be ending early. Just a couple of minutes ago, we had extra drama here in Fort Lauderdale, like that's any big shock. We had a big ba a bar room brawl right here in the middle of A1A. Fort Lauderdale police had to come out here and break it up. They arrested two people, and that is probably going to end this party because police have already made an agreement with the owners of this place to shut down at 1 o'clock. They're getting a little bit rowdy. You can see it over my shoulder, so it might be uh, just about over for these people. Uh, well, before we go on with other business, we have a small correction to make. We got some misinformation earlier tonight. We said that Broward County residents could call 311 for information regarding Wilma. 
That is not the case. 311 is only available for Miami-Dade County residents, so that's that. As far as Wilma is concerned, you can see that it's kicking up. Fabe, do me a favor, go ahead and show us some of these palm trees. This is a constant wind now. Uh, not really strong. I would probably say somewhere around 20, 25, maybe 30 miles an hour gusting every once in a while. But it is constant, and we're already starting to get some of that sand blowing up over A1A. After Katrina and Rita went through, there was sand all over A1A, so bad that they had to bring in bulldozers to remove it. Police are asking residents to stay inside their homes after uh, midnight, 1 o'clock, when they expect conditions to deteriorate at a clip, fast clip and they don't want people coming back out and sightseeing until well into tomorrow afternoon when the eye has passed over the state. It's going to be a fast one, folks. I can tell you that. Phil Farrow has been telling you all night the storm keeps picking up speed. It is expected to slingshot right over the Sunshine State and be out into the Atlantic tomorrow afternoon. But everybody is braced. Here on A1A, businesses are boarded up. There are only a few businesses that are up and running. The elbow room is one of them. But like I said, after that uh, bar room brawl in the middle of A1A just moments ago, I think Fort Lauderdale police are having a little bit of a discussion right now with the management saying that this might be the end of the party as we know it for Hurricane Wilma. So the situation in Fort Lauderdale is like you see, it's a little bit windy. There are people out, but uh, not many, not a lot of cars on the road. Wind is kicking up. We're getting some of that sand. The surf is really kicking up because we have that vacuum, Wilma on the other side of the state, and that low pressure pulling all of that air over. And uh, we're getting some nice wave action out there. And like I said, the sand is kicking up. We got the wind, no rain yet. And, uh, and that's all she wrote right now. And it's difficult to stand, especially when you wear contacts and you got that sand coming at you. Those have just been completely blown off. Uh, by the wind fill, and that is, uh, again, in the northern part of, 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 of the county. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of more of these types of reports start coming in. I also, I also want to briefly touch base on the fact that you were mentioning uh, generators, that folks have gotten unbuttoned be generators. Careful. Be very careful. Um, you must run these uh, devices outdoors where there's plenty of clean air. Don't make the mistake of bringing it inside your garage or inside your house. Uh, there's a lot of carbon monoxide, and that will kill you. There's no doubt about that. So please, if you have a generator, make sure that it is functioning and running outside where there's plenty of wind. And speaking of wind, uh, cooler temperatures outside, and that's indicative that we will probably have some nice cold temperatures on the way tomorrow. And remember, back to that carbon monoxide, yes, it can ki kill you. And the thing about it is y you just don't even know it. It's not like, you know, people are like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, when I start coughing, I'll know to run out there and turn it off. It, that's not the way it, it works. It's in the air and it gets in, 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 in your system and uh, the results can be tragic. So if, if you've got those, good for you for being prepared, but be very, very careful in how you operate them and just stay on top of it uh, because that's, that's the last thing that uh, we want for any of you or your families. Yeah, unfortunately, in the, in the immediate days after storms, we always hear of those situations where people are, are sick or, or, or they die as a result. So again, can't say it enough. Uh, please be careful when you're operating one of these generators. Uh, do we have something here we want to go? Um, so for, I think we want to go to Carmel. Okay. Um, Carmel Cafero, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is in West Broward. Uh, she'd been in Plantation and Sunrise and basically canvassing West Broward, uh, reporting in uh, superficial damage. Let's check in with her now to see what else she's seeing and uh, hearing in West Broward. Carmel. You could see the sky lighting up as transformers throughout the areas went, and there was that eerie green glow in the sky. We're in the parking lot right now of the Sawgrass Mills Mall, and if you take a look behind me, this tree is a perfect example of what's been going on here. There are trees all over the area that are down. There are branches that are falling off. And the wind gusts, well, they're substantial, and they're hard to stand up in. In plantation acres now, the power lines, we don't find any of those down, but throughout this entire area, there are trees absolutely everywhere that are down, broken, battered. This tree here is blocking this entire street, Northwest 118th Avenue. The yard here, multiple trees down. But one thing, one good thing anyway, so far, we have not seen any structural damage to the houses here. Of course, it's still early in the day. This is Rexmere Village in Davie, and the damage is already beginning here. 
Take a look around. You can see that these mobile homes are starting to come apart. Always a problem in weather like this. There were mandatory evacuations, but it's clear from looking around here that quite a few homes, people did not leave. Now, it looks like this particular one, the, the owners probably are not there. But throughout this area, we see car after car after car indicating people are home. And it's terrible because as these cusps come through and the pieces of these mobile homes fall apart, they fly across the road and they have razor sharp edges. So this is nothing to play with. But take a look here, Anthony, look on the ground. Look at this poor lizard. He looks lost. Better find a place to stay, fella. It's only gonna get worse. Okay, so we're getting ready to leave, but we couldn't leave the lizard. So we're gonna take him with us, even though he looks a little angry. We'll put him in a safe, dry place. These gusts are just incredibly strong. And as we're watching, these homes are coming apart, literally right in front of us. We're under 595 at Hiatus Road right now. And this wind is absolutely unbelievable. It has picked up substantially just in the last few minutes. And as these gusts come through, it's all but impossible to stand up. Take a look around. It's coming down so hard, you can barely see. Okay. And along Sunrise Boulevard, it's just awful. Take a look behind me. This power pole has snapped in half. Right down to the right over here, another one is completely broken in half. Look at this rain and wind and water coming across here. And these gusts, it's just absolutely terrifying, to tell you the truth. We are back now in Plantation Acres. The eye wall passed over us. We had a little bit of a break, but not much. The wind now is coming from the opposite direction, and there is a lot of damage around here. The trees, well, this happens every time there's a storm. They're stripped on one side. The fences, fences are down all over this neighborhood, along with trees, roof damage. We see a lot of roof damage. Here's this tree just snapped off right in front of us. And then, of course, there's roof damage. Tiles are flying off of roofs all over this area. There's the barrel tile, and then, Anthony, take a look over here to the left. There are tiles coming off of there. It's almost every place you look. And the wind is just howling. And at this point, listen. The damage seems to be cosmetic. I mean, the homes are still standing, but there is going to be some expensive damage in this neighborhood and who knows how many others throughout South Florida. Carmel Cafiro, 7 News. And that was about an hour ago. Here I am out live again. And this time we have moved out of the neighborhood and we are at a, right outside of the Sawgrass Mills Shopping Center. This is the old Garden Ridge store. And as you can see, uh, they've had quite a bit of structural damage here. Um, unlike in the Keys where it was a, uh, appears to have been a, a rain and a water event, out here in West Broward, it's been very much a wind event. Uh, if you take a look in this parking lot here, you'll see that there are just trees down everywhere. And every place throughout uh, Broward and, and uh, oh, there's a car here passing by. Excuse me, let me just get out of the way. Oh, look, they have children in the car and uh, out sightseeing. Gee whiz, not the greatest thing in the world to do. Because actually the reason that we moved out of the neighborhood is because there were so many down power lines, we were concerned about putting the mast up for our live shot. So for folks to be out sightseeing right now is just really totally not the best idea in the whole world. But there is a bright spot, and if you look out this way, it's out west, Phil. I know you'll know what that is that we're seeing. It looks like some uh, better weather coming in from the west, and uh, hopefully we can start picking up and cleaning up because there's going to be a lot of that to be done. Back to you guys in the studio and in the dark, I understand. Farrow uh, joining us from West Broward uh, with an assessment, a preliminary assessment of what it looks like there. Thanks to Carmel for that. We'll be getting back with her. Uh, we are getting information coming in from the different municipalities, and I've got a little bit here from the city of Aventura. Uh, I'll read from it. Uh, this from the uh, city manager's office there, saying that uh, Wilma's caused significant damage in Aventura. All interior streets are impassable. 
or substantially obstructed with downed trees or other debris. Uh, the entire city of Aventura is without power. All traffic signals are not functioning. Many along Biscayne Boulevard uh, have fallen down as a result of the winds out there. So again, the city manager in Aventura is asking for folks' cooperation. Stay put, stay home, stay off the roads to give them a chance to clear the debris and get a better handle on the, 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 the damage there. But again, it sounds like it's fairly widespread in the city of Aventura. The police department is planning to uh, canvas just to check on the welfare of, of residents there. So again, stay off the roads. Let them have the opportunity to be on the roads and do what they do. That coming to us again from the city of Aventura. I, I don't think Aventura is alone, Craig. Uh, we were just talking to uh, Lynn Martinez, who just uh, drove in to work here from the Gables area. And she was just telling us that it took her one hour to get here from uh, her home and uh, in the city of Coral Gables itself, it was just, uh, to quote Lynn, she said it's like the, the streets were, were shredded and it was uh, really I impossible to get here to where we are, which is off of I-95 on the uh, 79th Street Causeway here in North Bay Village. So uh, as the day progresses, we're going to be hearing more and more of this, um, different cities with uh, no traffic lights working, uh, impassable roads, possible flooding, and uh, you guys are just going to need to stay where you are so that those city officials and, uh, and utility crews can do what they need to do to make uh, your area safe once again. Some damage reports coming in now from our crew in Fort Lauderdale reg regarding the Broward School Board building. We're hearing that that building is very badly damaged. The uh, one side of the building is gone. All of the windows on that one side of the building are gone, and uh, you can actually see right inside the building the damage is so bad uh, the court buildings in downtown uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, Fort Lauderdale also badly damaged but of course the uh, school board building and the uh, Broward County courts more or less in that same neighborhood so if, if one got it you can only assume uh, that the others uh, got it as well uh, right now I'm being told we uh, have a little more with Alita Lareska she's out behind our studios in North Bay Village to talk about the improving conditions and the cooler weather Alita Hey there, Craig. You know what? Conditions out here, you can't even believe that a hurricane just went through this area because of the fact that the skies are clearing, conditions are have improved. However, as we've been talking about it all morning long, you want to make sure that you're still remaining near your home and not venturing out out there and getting into your cars, making sure that officials can head out there and assess the damage because there is some widespread debris in and around our studios here that we've noticed as we've walked around some. We're still dealing with some of this flooding and the ponding from earlier today and the winds are still picking up pretty good. I, probably still about 15, 20 miles per hour uh, sustained in some areas. Some pretty good wind gusts. Again, earlier this, this uh, morning or so, some large waves came up over the seawall and slammed onto the concrete here. And we're still looking at about three to four inches of some of this water. There are drains built into these seawalls, but it's gonna take a while because a lot of the debris that came off, off of the concrete has moved closer toward the seawall, so the water is still kind of stagnant over here. We're also looking at a pile of debris, a lot of rocks here, trees down. We saw a palm tree that's down too, and a couple of our satellites, satellites are still holding on, thank goodness, but they were rattling earlier this morning when the winds were coming in off of that eye, eye wall. Uh, I do want to mention behind or next to the studio, there is this building under construction and some of the debris from this building has come off due to a collapse on the first story there, or, or the top floor rather of the building. And you can still see that some of the debris up there is kind of at a slant and there's some homes and, and condos in around that area. So we are worried that some of that debris, maybe with these stronger gusts that come through here, that it may fall off. So those of you living in and around the North Bay Village area and you live near buildings that are under construction, you wanna make sure you stay indoors because you never know if any of the debris from these buildings are gonna come, come piling off as soon as you walk out the door. We're still seeing a lot of trees in and around the area that look to be that they could topple over, so you want to remain away from that. Meanwhile, the water is looking a lot quieter at this hour, but earlier today we did see a couple of the docks that were situated off of the seawall here that were floating out in the bay, and some boats that have uh, 
looks like they've toppled over near the seawall toward the Biscayne Bay, some of the, our neighbors here. As far as the structural damage is concerned, it doesn't look like too many of the buildings here. Uh, looks like it got, everything looks good from here. Just a few of the plywood windows or the plywood from the windows or the shutters that have come off. But things are looking pretty good from here. Winds are continuing to blow some of these clouds off toward the north. So still looking at some dark clouds, but definitely seeing some clearing in and around the Miami Beach area. And as we've been talking about the change in the temperatures, as you walk outside this afternoon and you wake up tomorrow morning, those temperatures are going to dip down into the 50s around Miami, Miami Beach, the Fort Lauderdale area. The last time we felt these 50 degree temperatures, we're back in April. So it's a nice change after everything that we've endured with Wilma and crossing our fingers that nothing else is lurking out there that we need to worry about anytime soon. That's the situation out here along North Bay Village. Back to you guys in the studio. Out back here in North Bay Village. Uh, uh, glad to hear. Well, but point of reference, in case you folks at home hadn't figured that out, we're not able to hear each other. We're sort of using walkie-talkies to kind of tell each other when to go and when to stop talking. So, uh, but we know Alita's been talking about improving weather. We know she's been talking about cooler temperatures. So we're grateful for that. We can hear each other. Yes. But yeah. that's about it. And uh, we are getting updates, though, from our assignment desk, uh, uh, you know, the old school way on printed pieces of paper. And uh, we just got an update on from... Monroe County Sheriff's Office, but we're going to get to that in a second. I think this is video of uh, Normandy Isle, which is uh, not far from us here. Uh, there is a community there that is surrounded by water there all around uh, Biscayne Bay. So uh, you're looking at some of the video that we were able to shoot uh, just uh, east of us over in Normandy Isle, uh, maybe earlier in the day or uh, during the day, looks like some people yeah, there on the street. Are they are they walking through? Uh, yeah, that that street looks uh, pretty flooded there. But I guess you you expect uh, something like that to happen during a storm of uh, of this magnitude. Cars rolling through there again. Uh, what what people are asking residents not to do is get in cars and 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 drive and and check things out. But people are doing it anyway. It's hard to stop that, I guess. Okay. Yep. All, All right. right. We're back. The video from Normandy Island again, fairly consistent with what we've seen in in many areas. Uh, some roof damage, uh, obviously power lines, trees that have been down, limbs that have been downed, and uh, signage, uh, large and small, that's been brought down as a result of this. Uh, fairly consistent with what we We're anticipated. Gone. Yes. Yes. Uh, some exterior damage here. Some signage here at the Seven News Studios in North Bay Village. Again, what we kind of thought we'd see. Uh, the last reports we've gotten from uh, the county EOC in Miami-Dade, no uh, substantial structural damage thus far, but again, we've got to kind of put an asterisk with that because at uh, this point in time, now that conditions are improving, authorities are out canvassing the area, uh, trying to get a fix on where there is damage. So we may get reports of more damage or greater than we're aware of right now, obviously. Now, obviously, is the assessment stage of things when uh, officials are out there checking things out. And I was mentioning right before we showed you that video of Normandy Isle, uh, Monroe County sheriffs have been assessing uh, the situation in the Florida Keys, and we have uh, an update from there. Uh, the Keys obviously closed until US-1 is cleaned up. They are saying that um, there is significant damage but it's not catastrophic so that is a good a good thing their priority right now is to remove the debris uh, from us1 so maybe when all is said and done those people that left their home